And uh, welcome to The Woody Show, fresh hour. And uh, we have a very busy hour. We actually have two in-studio guests. All One right. person we have uh, we have had on the show before. I've been here once. <laughs> uh, you, you've been here a couple different times. Have I? Yeah, you filled I in. One day you filled in for, for Greg once. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah filled I want to say with everybody a big thank you to Kevin because my dog died a few years ago, and it happened to be a day where Woody called you up and said, "Hey, Greg can't be here because." Greg's taking literally two days off, and you came here for two days in a row yeah. to fill in for me, Wait. not that you would ever have to fill in what? for me. What? Yeah. 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 I remember one day, but two days? Yeah, because we oh, ran into yeah. each other initially at a at a car dealership, and yeah, we talked yeah, yeah. for a while, and I was we were brand new yeah. uh, in the city, and uh, I, I said, hey, you should come by sometime. I one day, but I didn't yeah. know I got two days out of this. Why did? Why was it Probably two days, and then high. it never back? Did I? No, then you it? came no. back again. Yeah, you but did. But why did I never come back after the two days? You did. You came back again. I think you had. And they say we do it doesn't cause you memory like, loss. Yeah. You hear like every week. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, you that's weird. Yeah, now I know I died during that <laughs> You know it's attack. the Woody and, and Kevin this show, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is like a Jacob's Ladder loop. No, because then you came back and you were talking about uh, Tusk, which you were working on at the time. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. God, so, it's all I mean, you've had a lot going on. And then uh, uh, w- 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 I so many questions for you. But uh, And then the other guest we have here, who we've never had on our show before for obvious reasons, uh, Ralph Garman is here. Ralph Garman is what a pleasure to meet you guys. Is this weird? For no, you? no, not at all. Okay, because it's, it's great to have somebody who wants me to be on the radio <laughs> for a change. <laughs> Lately, I've been running into the opposite. Yeah. So uh, this is a pleasure. Uh, Ralph Garman was on a competing radio station here in LA on uh, K Rock on the Kevin and Bean show for how many years are you on that show? Uh, almost 18? 18 wow. years. 18 years. Yeah, and yeah, uh, and now he's not on that show. But like no. when he was on that show, obviously he wasn't going to come be a guest on this right. show. No way. Even though, like you know, we we've, we've loved Kevin for years, mm-hmm. and they do so much together. They do the Ho- uh, Hollywood Babylon. Mm-hmm. Uh, they travel the country and do these podcasts and these get-togethers and everything else. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, so welcome. Nice Thank to you. see you, Ralph. Thanks. Nice. So, did you hate us that entire yeah, time? And, that uh, no, and yeah. I heard somebody said, "Oh, those guys think you hate them," and I was like, I, "First of all, I had never heard the show." Because I was busy doing at the right. same time, our show yeah. at the same yeah. time, so I never even had heard the show. Yeah. So no, I had no bad feelings towards you guys at all, other than you were kicking our ass in I the ratings. Know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, it was climbing more and more. So yeah. I mean, there was a lot of nervous people over at K Rock when you right. guys started mm-hmm. uh, gaining traction. What have you missed most? Uh, like, wh- like, what are you jonesing to do on the radio? Like, uh, you haven't been on Kevin and Bean for how long now? Uh, they gave me the boot in November. November. All right. So yeah. it's it's been a number of months. So six, seven, eight. I'm doing DJ math. Let's mm-hmm. see. So November, <laughs> November to December. Eight that's months. one month. And then this is June. So six, seven months. Yes. See how I put that together? You're yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah. Very, very Wait. Yeah. So Without seven an months. abacus. So yeah. over so over the course of seven months, what's the thing that you miss doing the most on the radio? Because you, you've been known for doing, you know, voices. A lot of characters, a lot of celebrity impressions, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't really missed anything because I do a ton of it in our show. Babylon yeah. is a lot of that, too. I do a lot of celebrity impressions, a lot of character voices. And I'll, almost after, not, a couple months after they uh, let me go, I started doing this Ralph Report podcast yeah. daily. Uh, started in January of this year. We just did over a, our 100th episode. We just Wow. You don't miss getting up? At all? I yeah. don't no. really. That's weird. That's, weird. Surprising. Yeah. that's, so, that's weird. so weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you miss hanging out with Lisa May on that show, though, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. I don't she, think she's there any longer. She, she suffered the same fate you did. I always thought it was really weird because I have, look, I have tremendous respect for Kevin and Bean as a show. So for long, a long time. Yeah, yeah, super successful for so long in a very competitive market. K Rock is a radio station. I mean, what a brand, what a legacy, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So because of all that, like, I don't get how stuff like, Lisa May situation or how your situation went down. That just seems so weird to me. Yeah. So what, like, what, what did you have? <laughs> yeah. Did you have pictures of somebody that, yeah. you know, I, what, did you get wrapped up in some kind of weird, like me too type thing? Or? No, yeah. there was no, as far as I know, I never really got a clear answer on exactly what happened. I just know my contract they have was new up. owners. They had new, new ownership. So yeah. the, the, the prevailing wisdom seemed to be that maybe they came in and as a cost cutting measure, yeah. they started slashing the bottom line and getting rid of some salaries. So, but how did it happen? Like, did they just call you up or was it after the show one day? They just said, Hey, we want you to come back tomorrow. Well, My contract was up at the end of November and about two weeks before the contract was up. I thought it was odd because we hadn't got a phone call to renegotiate. Yeah. And uh, they they kept saying, "Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. Don't worry about it. It's going to uh, happen." Well, and after and that that's many how I years. knew it wasn't going to <laughs> yeah. happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they called me in the office and they said, "Yeah, it turns out we're not going to renew uh, your contract, and your uh, wow. services are no longer necessary." As of like wow. that day, so there was going to be I had two weeks. Be... I had two week oh, two uh, lead time before was my last day. 
but okay. they didn't want me to say anything, so I played out the last two oh, weeks. Oh, that's oh. right. Oh. As I if it was that. business as usual. I forgot oh, about that. And I said, just do me this favor after 18 years. Let me have on the last day, let me say goodbye to the audience. That's the yeah. only thing I really wanted to do was thank the people who had been there for me, not only professionally, but personally, too. You know, when you're on the air for a long time, sure. yeah. Yeah. you talk about your life. And I had lost my son. I'd lost my mother. And I talked about it openly on the air. And the outpouring of yeah, the love sure. from the audience was amazing. So I said, let me just say goodbye to those people because who knows if I'll ever have a chance to be on the air again. I don't I yeah. didn't know. So that was uh, that was my farewell show. And then after that, it was all over. Yeah, because I, I, I thought, uh, you know, and I, I, I've never met you face to face until today. Uh, but, you know, people had said to me, well, you know, it was Ralph that got Lisa May thrown out of there. That's not the case. I don't think that's the case. If I had as that much kind was... of power, I'd still be on the show. Right. Yeah. 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 I never got the impression yeah. that that was how that went down. No. Mm. I think it was just another one of those like weird moves. They wanted to freshen things up, but they just didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But then in the course of doing that, they completely. They alienated a lot of people. They yeah. effed it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. like in Ralph's case, the day that he left and he was allowed to be like, OK, I'm leaving. Goodbye. He wasn't allowed to say why he was leaving. Yeah. And that shit was, sorry. That's all right. We can, that can fix was that. happening during the, the, the uh, biggest uh, kind of move forward in the Me Too movement. Yeah. As all those stories were happening. And so it was like, if you're not letting him say why he's leaving. I know. It looks, yeah. 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 It looks yeah. suspicious. People are going to make up their own mind. So I jumped yeah. online and, and on Instagram and was just like, hey, man, he's. They let him go for financial reasons. They didn't let him say anything, right. blah, 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 just to make sure that yeah. people didn't put two and two Well, any disruption over there works for me, so. Yeah. 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 Well, you're welcome, Woody. That, yeah. that was my whole plan. Yeah. You're looking I can out, lose my job for Woody, yeah. then the whole thing will be worthwhile. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Right. Uh, so, I mean, Kevin, just because, you know, I think about this kind of stuff, you know, being overweight, and I know I'm unhealthy and, uh, and all that kind of stuff, but you didn't know anything was happening before mm. the heart attack until I, I couldn't catch my breath that was the thing like i started sweating but i sweat when i breathe so that didn't really <laughs> right, right. Me. i feel and, you and, and and uh i was i felt nauseated yeah. which i never get sick but nobody ever says you'll feel nauseated but was it a different kind of nausea no, or just, just like kind of like what did I, I thought i drank bad milk i'd gotten yeah. off stage Weird. drank some milk and i was like oh i drank some sour milk or somebody spit in the milk so that was a symptom and then I couldn't catch my breath. I could breathe, but it yeah. was shallow. So I'd be like, I couldn't go <sighs> right all the way up. And that turned out to be the the blocked LAD was pushing down on the heart, which oh, was God. in turn pushing down on the lungs. Wow. So for me, it didn't Jeez. read like a heart incident. I was like, I, I so can't it's not like catch your my arm breath. Hurt? Yeah. There was no arm tingling. Weird. I was waiting for that. Yeah. No. I grew up a, a child of the 70s, so I watched a lot of Sanford and Son, so I was waiting for Lisbeth. All right. My <laughs> chest. It was a big one. Crazy. Yeah. Nothing. There was no big one. So yeah. that's how those heart attacks sneak up on people. But how did you know you needed them. help? Um, I was, I didn't, and I kept denying it. We had a second show to do. Yeah. And so I was like, just let me lay down for a little bit. Leave me alone in Forever. this Forever. Yeah, 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 really. Like, yeah. I, I would have died in the room. I was like, I just need to rest before the next show. Oh, and then weird. they canceled. Uh, Jason Muse's wife, Jordan Monsanto, she runs our company. She canceled the second show. She's like, I, I, you don't. I've never seen you sick in my life. This is freaking me out. So I mean, I did you go pale? Like it was, I was like, pale. Yeah. I couldn't catch my breath. I was sweating profusely, and I felt ice cold. Emily, who does weird. my hair, was like, I touch your neck all the time, and I've never felt you like. She's like, you feel ice cold, cold and stuff. Man, and I was like, well, break out the hair dryer and start drying me. I would have thought it was a stomach up. flu and then just gone to bed and covered myself yeah. with a blanket. Yeah. And that's and you why been I dead. was like, I'm like, when I get sick, I don't want people around. I'm like, I want yeah. to go off like an animal and die yeah. in the woods. So yeah. I was wow. chasing people out of that room. There's a good chance that like uh, alone, that would have been it. It would have yeah. been the end. Because that's again, insane. it was, there was nothing related to like, this feels dire. I just felt right. like crap, yeah. like really yeah. like crap, but like more of a stomach bug than anything else. Mm. So yeah, it, it snuck up, man. And that's when they told me in the hospital, I got to the hospital, like the medics were real sweet. They didn't ever say anything. They were like, Mr. Smith, we want to take you to the hospital just to be safe. I'm like, oh God, don't do that. That's embarrassing. They're like, no, it's right. so close. People are going to see and your we wiener just there. just be sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then they were like, uh, he goes, you ever been to the hospital before? I said, I've visited some people. And he goes, well, you never been a patient? I said, no. And he goes, oh, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah. And I was like, really? Time. And he said, wow. yeah, you ever drive in an ambulance? I was like, no, no, I haven't. And he was like, we'll even use the siren. Nice. So they did like a make a wish foundation. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's on his way yeah. out, we yeah. might as well make him feel good. Like yeah. infantilize him before he dies. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got into the ER that the doctor was like, uh, how do you feel? And I was like, you know what? He was like on a zero to 10, how do you feel? Up one to 10, pain level. And I yeah. said, negative three. 
And he goes, you're doing all this wrong. Wow. You know you're having a massive heart attack, don't you? And I was like, what? No, of course not. Don't be joking like that. He's like, no, you're having a massive heart attack. We got to get you up to the OR because if it's what I think it is, we got to move very, very fast. Wow. Jeez. Upstairs. See, and this story like, is making me feel no better. I thought I was going to get yeah. some kind of comfort out of this. You're just making me <laughs> more paranoid. Now paranoid. I need some weed. This terrifying. is the comfort. Yeah. This is the important okay, part. Okay, here we go. The, the rest of it is Sturm and Drang. We all live our lives terrified of dying yeah. every given moment. So much so that we rarely like to talk about it. We'll joke about it and stuff, but it's the thing, you know, it's, it's he who shall not be named. Nobody wants to think about the yeah. end and stuff. And I had no choice but to think about it because they're like, you got a 20% chance of living, 80% chance of dying if we don't do this right. So I was sitting there going like, what do I do? And I was like, do I pray? And then I was like, there's no point in praying because I'm sure God would be like, you made dogma. Right, God. I was going to say. Yeah. So yeah. I laid <laughs> there and said, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have thought of that back in 99. <laughs> yeah. So I laid there and said, all right, well, you spent most of your life with your head up your ass looking at your head and heart. How do you feel now? Like, this is the moment. Like, of all the moments to consider in life yeah. and pull apart, this is the thing you've been most scared of. You know, that and people seeing your junk. What is the, <laughs> what you're feeling right now? And I wasn't, like scared and I wasn't mad. I wasn't like, I was weird. I took a lot of comfort from, there's a moment in Neil Gaiman's uh, Sandman. Like after the initial arc, uh, initial story arc where he comes back, he's been in prison for like hundreds of years. He sees his sister for the first time. They don't tell you right away, but as you read the issue, you're like, oh, his sister is death. The person, the personage of death. So throughout the issue, she's helping usher souls to the other side. People who are surprised to find themselves dead and stuff like that while the story's going on she encounters this one guy's an old man and uh he's like who are you and she's like you know who i am and he's like oh i can't believe this he's like after this this is what i did i worked so hard and now it comes to this what did i get and she says uh neil gaiman wrote this uh, death says you got what everybody gets you got a lifetime and that's what i couldn't help but think about i was like oh i got a lifetime and i thought about my lifetime i thought about like my family not the one I, not just the one I came from, but the family that I went on to build with friends, and the family I went on to build with my wife and stuff. And I felt, I thought about my job. I was like, how weird. I just wanted to like see if I could make a movie about me and my friends. It turned into this quarter century journey where I did all these amazing things that I never imagined I would ever leave Highlands, let alone do that stuff. I was like, if this is the end, man. Like, if you have to die, if the ferryman is coming. Just pay him and get on the boat. Don't be a bitch. Don't be the last guy at the party. Like yeah. I, I always thought I'd put my fingernails in the earth and be dragged out of this world screaming, yeah. who do I have to fillet to stay in this world? <laughs> but I, in that moment, there was comfort. There was a sense of completion that nobody ever told me about. Like the sense of like, oh, I'm done. Like there wasn't like, I'm done and I'm going to stop and, and no one will ever. There was the sense of like, I did it. Like yeah. I'm finished. That's awesome. There was comfort. There was, there was peace. So I know a lot of people, everybody, we're all terrified of death. Of so course. I love sharing that part of the story because you know, I'm sure like if I was having a more painful death, I wouldn't have been yeah. so serene, yeah, yeah. you know, but <laughs> yeah. in that world where it was kind of painless, I was like, well, this is the natural order of things. Like, of course, we don't want it to end. But like there was a sense of accomplishment and yeah. being like, I'm done. Like and freedom. My mother had told me when she died once on the table, I was like, what was it like? She was like, oh, I was floating. You know, she said a lot of things you hear about and read about and stuff. But she said this one interesting thing, which I was fascinated by. I said, what was the feeling? She goes. It felt like every responsibility I ever had was just gone. She said, I felt so incredibly oh, wow. light because of that. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I didn't have to worry about this one or that the one. The mortgage or, or whatever. Yeah. It's crazy. So I was like, all right, so you've been here in this best of all possible world over 65 years at that point. She's like 70 now. I said, and you've been dead for like a minute and a half, which was better. And she's like, dead. And I said, why? What? And she was going like, I've never had that feeling in this lifetime. Like a sense of peace and weird. utter sense of peace and nothing and nobody to Freedom. worry about. Mm. That's yeah. weird. Maybe that's why they say you float because yeah. all of your responsibilities Maybe. and have it could be like away. like in like in a uh, in a Christmas story. You know uh, what was Jacob Marley said? We wear the chains yeah. we forge in life. It's like all that sense of responsibility of I got to do this and I got and not just to other people but to yourself. The dreams you have that maybe you go for and don't work out or the things you've never tried before. And you're like, I got time. And there's so much inner turmoil that mm -hmm. suddenly when it was like, it's out of your hands, you're probably going to die. I was like, Oh, all right. Well, that was fun. You know, yeah. like there was no yeah. sense of like, no, you yeah, yeah. better save me. Like, I was thankful. I was grateful. I felt like Kevin Spacey at the end of American Beauty. Yeah, yeah. And you never want to say you feel like Kevin yeah. Spacey. Right. Anymore, yeah. But it's a strong um, comparison yeah. to make. Well, I'm glad you have a part two. Thank you. A sequel to your life, and yes. uh, you well get to move put. on and 
Me Ralph, too. I need uh, the work. Nice <laughs> to see that. <laughs> Kevin goes, so does my career. <laughs> <laughs> he puts me in all his movies. We do Babylon together. Yeah. I was like, pull through, you bastard. Yeah. Pull through. I Live. Was like, Hollywood babble off. Well, it's nice to see. <laughs> it's just nice to see that you got up and you have moved on as well. Uh, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman, see them for the Hollywood Babylon and their other live events and shows throughout the country. Uh, Kevin's podcast, of course, get all that information at smodcast.com, S-M-O-D-cast.com. And uh, Ralph, you can see the Ralph Report. Get all the information about that, the theralphreport.com. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for Thank having you guys. Thanks for, having Thanks for being here. You guys haven't been such dicks. Jeez. Yeah, right. Jeez. <laughs> all right, it's the Woody Show. 